Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome to another wood carving video. So in this one, I'm gonna be kind of breaking down and showing how I carve the uh, pine needles um, within this frame. This is the last section of pine needles that I'm gonna be working on and then I'll be moving on to another elements of this frame. In another video, I talked about the pine cone. So in this one, I'm gonna break down the pine needle. So we'll jump into it. The first thing I do is I shape it with my gouges, which I already have completed here. I use a small selection of gouges in order to get it shaped, primarily the V gouge here. And I also use a number five, 12 millimeter, sometimes a number seven, 14 millimeter. It really just depends on the situation. So I'll shape it, I'll give it that that structure, and then I block it out even further, creating like clusters within that, that structure, if that makes sense. So after it's blocked out, I transition to my Dremel. So I primarily use this bit. It's a teardrop or a flame diamond burr bit. After I Dremel the pine needles, then I usually clean it up. Sometimes I'll use a wire brush that helps, otherwise just a standard toothbrush. Sandpaper file. If you don't have this, it's not that big of a deal, but this sanding wheel is honestly huge and it speeds up the process instead of using your file or your sandpaper. I just use this. Okay, so now I'm going to start carving with my Dremel here and I always start with the closest cluster and then I work my way back as I go. So I'm, I'm going to have my, my mask on here, but you want to just make nice smooth strokes and give it just give it a little shape and some curve to it to give it some character, I guess you could say. Hold the Dremel with an angle like this. Um, it's just easier to control and, and create those long sections for each individual needle. Then obviously this, this section right here looks way bigger than what a natural needle would look like. So I'll just kind of similar to what I did right here, I'll just make another pass to split that and that'll create two, two needles there. Now what you want to do is work the ends and do a little undercutting to separate this cluster from the clusters below it and then kind of give it as you gave each cluster some different lengths, carve different lengths of individual needles as well to just give it that random look and to break up any consistency. And there's gonna be some fuzzies and like that's kind of nice where the where the toothbrush comes into play. You can clean it up a little bit. So it's easier to see. There's gonna be some fuzzies in there that gets cleaned up with the sandpaper or with the the little rotary sander. You would just repeat that process with the next three clusters. I'll then address the ends here again, because that's it's a little different than this. But so we'll just uh We'll just repeat that process with these next three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Okay, now you address the end, similar to how you did with the first cluster, but because there's so much space as it's right up to the background, you're gonna have to get a lot more aggressive and it's gonna take you quite a bit longer. But it's important to, it's important to get that, I guess that monotonous straight section like this broken up. Um, it just, like I said, it just creates a little bit more character and, and realism. So what I do, I just look for a crease and I go basically almost all the way to the background and I just make just really gentle, gradual strokes upwards and basically expanding that, making that, um, that bigger. sections done. I'm going to continue on to carve the third and fourth section here. Again, work front to back. At least that's what works best for me. <laughs> Like I said, hit it with the toothbrush a little bit, get the dust out. Then you can either clean it up with your file and sandpaper. Just kind of work those creases with your file. Get in between each individual needle and get the fuzzies out.
Now you may be able to achieve this look with gouges. Um, I'm assuming you're going to need extremely sharp gouges and small gouges. All of my attempts to achieve this look with gouges has not turned out the way I wanted it. That's why I've transitioned to Dremels in order to get this look. But it is possible, probably, to achieve the look. But I haven't been able to get there, so. And then what I use is just this sanding disc at a really low speed. Like I said, I like to give it a little, a little curve, a little shape, just to give it some character. And I like to have them kind of moving both ways, just flowing in different directions. So that's pretty much it for this one and the pine needles. If you guys have any questions or if you have any ideas or tips and tricks that um, you would suggest, then make sure you, you voice them in the comments. Appreciate you guys watching. And I'll see you in the next one.